Hey everyone, Sean here from winstrength.com bringing you another training vlog. On this video, I'm actually starting the new training program by Brian Olsrue. It is the Dark Horseman training program that he's developed. Uh, it's a free program you can find online on his YouTube channel. Uh, I'll leave a link below to check that video out. It's a really cool video, it's really interesting, and uh, it's got me interested in trying to train that video, trying to train that program to see what the results I can get are, with the main results being uh, increased cardiovascular capacity and uh, some increased strength, obviously, and hopefully some body composition uh, change goals. We're taking a shift away from powerlifting style videos and moving over to uh, some more mm, strongman style uh, power building movements where we're not just necessarily focused on single one rep max strength we're kind of trying to develop a base level of strength that we can execute a number of times so thinking of doing triple reps anything pretty much more than a single so that we can have some strength that's sustainable over a period of reps at the very least uh, so today is actually day one week one of the program it's focused on squat and deadlifts uh, one thing i will say is to read the training program properly I'll throw up a copy of a picture of what I did and I'll throw up a picture of what should have been done. So instead of doing three rep, three rep maxes for the safety squat, box squats, I actually ended up doing sets of 12 just because I was just glancing over it and not really paying attention to what I was writing down. So something to pay attention to really strongly is to pay attention to what you have to write down and just really transpose properly. Just an eye for detail is really what you need there and just just double check what you were doing uh, it explains why my weight that i hit today was far lower than the weight that was, that would have been prescribed in the program if i had followed the directions and it would have made the rest of the training day seem a lot more sensical and logical <laughs> but nevertheless uh, i'll take you through it so we started off with some conditioning i didn't really videotape that because it was pretty boring uh, we just started off with 10 minutes uh, of a circuit of one minute row with some uh, five reps of jumps. Uh, it does recommend box jumps, but I don't have a box or the necessary ceiling height, so we're just jumping as high as I can. And then uh, three pull ups, so we just did that. I got around five rounds in. Uh, then we follow that up with the max effort section of the day, which takes about 30 minutes. Starting off with some Romanian deadlifts followed by some box squats with the SS yoke bar, then some hanging leg raises, or some knee bends, and wrapping up with some kettlebell swings. So it is, that was meant to be five sets with 12 reps for the RDLs and then three reps for the SS yoke box squats, but it ended up being 12 reps because I was just transposing down incorrectly. As I said before, it would have made a lot more sense if I had stuck to the heavy triples rather than uh, lightweight 12s. So with that being said, today's training day didn't necessarily go as planned, but I did get a good workout in nonetheless. Uh, and then we just did some more five sets of 12 and 10s of the hanging leg raises and kettlebell swings. So that went well. I think I would have had a different explanation of this if I had followed the program because heavy triples definitely elicit a different response than moderate 12s or well heavy 12s really so next time I guess hey uh, we follow that up with volume work so this is why this makes a lot less sense I was like why am I doing sets of 12 and then another set of 12 for the volume work but it does make sense because what we would have done is heavy triples at whatever weight that is and then we take 80% of the weights that we use for the max effort session and then move that down for the volume work. So the volume work is the exact same list of exercises except we're doing three sets of eight to 12s and an AMRAP set with the box squats uh, at 80%. So there would have been a, a lot bigger weight variance. So instead of today, we took 80% of the 12 reps that I did. So it was a weird, uh, it was a weird weight selection today, but hey, all part of the learning process. It's something I should correct in the future. So basically max effort, volume work are both the same set, are both the same list of exercises, then we just mix that up with the sets and rep schemes. Uh, we follow that up with the dynamic effort for today, which were deadlifts with a band. Um, we throw in the dynamic effort movements to work on that explosive strength that uh, Brian Olger always talks about. It's really great to 
work on those dynamic movements, build some explosive power. And the cool thing is that um, hopefully we'll pan out in the future is that all the dynamic movements are the standard, I guess the standard in quotation marks, power lifting movements, but with uh, bands or accommodating resistance thrown in there. So what that does is it takes some stress off of the heavy, big the big four movements that I'm used to doing really heavy and tailing, tapering down the weights that I use while increasing hopefully the explosiveness in the lift. So today instead of doing heavy triples at a really heavy weight, we did moderate triples with bands and the emphasis on exploding out of the hole. Uh, the bands will help you explode out of the hole because it gets harder to bring that weight up as you go up. Um, so we just did 250, which is around 50 to 60, I think it's like 55% of my one rep max. Uh, we did add bands, so that adds a couple more pounds at the top of the movement. But what that does is accommodating resistance is basically you're starting off at the bottom with no weight. So, let, sorry, let me back up. Accommodating resistance can be done with either some elastic bands or rubber bands. Uh, you can buy them pretty much anywhere, Elite, FTS, Rogue, even Amazon has cheap bands that you can buy, uh, or you can use chains. Uh, I think the cheaper option is the chains, sorry, the cheaper option is the bands, but you can do some chains uh, if you really want to. I made the mistake of buying some hauling chains that are relatively lightweight rating, so they weren't really that heavy. Don't do that mistake if you're going to get chains, make sure you get some relatively heavy chains, like you want the thick the thick chains that they probably use for industrial purposes, not just for uh, making gates and whatever. So don't make the same mistake I did. Get some really heavy duty chains that actually weigh something, nevertheless. So I just have some bands uh, that I got from Elite FTS. I'll just explain the concept to you. At the bottom of the lift, uh, there is pretty much no tension because I just stand on them. I just stand on the band. You can get band pegs if you have the platform for it. I don't quite have that yet. So a cheap option is to just stand on the bands or you can use heavy dumbbells. I don't have that. So again, standing on the band, one band around the barbell. And at the bottom of a lift, it's pretty much loose. And as you stretch out, as you lift, pick up the weight, there is more and more tension that goes into expanding this uh, rubber band. So you go from hypothetically zero weight to, depending on the weight chart of the band you buy, a, a couple of for like from anywhere from 50 to 200 pounds, depending on the weight rating for that rubber band. So all it is, is as you get higher and higher, you have to exert more and more force, but you're also in a more mechanically advantageous position. So at the one would argue at the bottom of a deadlift is probably the harder section of the deadlift to pull the bar off of. So a lot of people have a problem breaking the bar off the floor. But at the top of the deadlift, it's a lot more easier to lock that out given the same weight. So if I can deadlift 495 from the floor all the way to the top, I could argue that I could probably lock out from an almost standing position, maybe 520 pounds. I could go, I can overload the weight that I would lift at the top if I were to cut off, if I were to reduce the range of motion. So all we're doing with the band is adding more weight as we stand up with the weight or, ex or extend out the lockout position, whatever the movement may be. The theory goes behind this is that we want to generate a lot of force from the bottom. So we want to have a combinating resistance. So we've, we're basically forced to generate a lot of explosive power out of the hole because if we try and do the weight slowly with enough elastic or stored energy, it's going to be really hard to lock out that weight. So we want to add some tension towards the top of the lift that doesn't exist at the bottom of the lift so we can accelerate up throughout the lift. So we're starting off really explosive and then the band is gonna increase and increase in tension. So we're gonna to have to drive more and more and more force into that at the bottom, at the, the top, sorry. So if we start off with a lot of power out of the bottom, that top is gonna to lock out really quickly. Uh, the reason why you wanna have bands is it kind of forces you to do that. You can obviously do this without any accommodating resistance. Um, so you could just do it with an, a regular barbell if you don't have access to chains or bands, but it just does make it a little bit easier for that um, mechanical feedback of the weight getting heavier as you stand up with the weight. Nevertheless, the, the end goal in mind is to really drive up off of the floor with some explosive power. The benefit of this is by doing this with the typical big four movements, the squat, bench, deadlift, and press, not the variants, just the standard presses. So your conventional or sumo deadlift, your high or low bar back squat, a standard bench press, and a strict overhead press. 
is that it reduces some of the wear and tear that you've had if you've gone heavy on these for the last couple of years like I have. So I've noticed in recent months that my shoulder is being aggravated by the low bar back squat position as well as the bench press. Both have been getting significantly heavy for me and I don't think I am keeping up with the recovery from lifting those heavy weights. So by dropping the weight used but increasing the somewhat intensity and difficulty of the lift, I'm able to hopefully extend the amount of time that I can do those lift whilst not having to worry about uh, dropping the weight and not getting that training stimulus. So the good thing is I opted for the SS yoke bar today for my squat accessory movement to take some uh, stress off the shoulder joint. So hopefully that pans out in the future. So hopefully I can say goodbye to some shoulder pain in the future. Uh, but nevertheless, that's, that's one of the benefits of doing the dynamic effort method. Uh, with the standard compound lifts and it, it just changes up the angles and your body positioning and hopefully removes some repetitive use injuries on your joints there that you would have experienced by doing the standard standard lifts with heavy weights for relatively low reps. So that wraps up for today. Uh, please like and subscribe to see how the rest of the training program goes. Again, I'll leave links for Brian Olzer's YouTube channel as well as his website. He does some great informative views. Uh, check out, I highly recommend his overhead press videos because they've helped me uh, generate a lot of power in my overhead press and create some new PRs there. So thanks again for watching. This has been Selwyn from Win Strength, And remember, a better life through strength.